I'm I'll speak on this like that fire man talking about he wants some uh, some more new logs. And he's he already got his kitchen, all the fire station kitchen remodeled, but he didn't remodel Mr. Mercedes kitchen downstairs in the in the, in the basement of the city hall. Before I could come down there and eat breakfast, boy, I guess to keep from going to McDonald's every day. You know, this big black smoky the bear, he ain't no brown bear, he a smoky. And then he talking, come off and retire, talking about the Flint peoples, you know. And uh, another thing about about uh, my third board councilman. Do you, who the president, Mr. Mashak, do Murphy, talking about, talking about you, you hope the state coming in to do their job and, and all that stuff and you can do it yourself. They're talking about you go and light a cigar, he don't even want to smoke a cigar. I mean, and, and, hey, Mr. Murphy, what's the difference between the elder from the sanctified church and, and the reverend from the Baptist church? <laughs> because since them and Michelle Young coming in here asking some money, that's my lawyer, and she up there trying to use the opera funds in but the Tinos, what they, the lawyers done asked me some questions about could they buy a church. I told them, yeah. Before I asked them, for, over in front of the Longfellow, and they bought it. But he won't. He got. But he said, who's going to be the pastor? But he won't. Make, I don't want to say nothing about right there, but they're going to try to come in here and anoint me to the beast. But that's what. Man, nobody can't talk for me and stuff. That's why I want you to know what's the difference between the sanctified people talking about us. Don't call no man reverend. But the Baptists ain't got no problem with it. And shallow ain't got no ain't got no problem being reverend. Gus and Martin Luther King ain't got no problem being a reverend to speak on these people's planet. And you talk about Telling somebody you shouldn't speak on a reverend got killed right in front of your yard and stuff, and you tell them somebody you shouldn't speak on that stuff and all all that stuff and spray that junk when when you come around and stuff like that because the man coming to Flint talking about he gonna post some uh, some all of me and you have to be you already know about the Martinos lawyers and Michelle after my lawyer then got killed and got found buck naked in his house by some skinny woman. Michelle took over, now she up there. You, you know, and, and that man, you better. What you gonna do, Mr. Murphy? How about take that? Next public speaker, Madam Clerk. Audrey Muhammad. I'm going to try to keep it together because we're going to talk some about that ordinance, that disorderly ordinance. A lot of this is in that. We cannot expect other folks to act better than what we expect ourselves to act when we're acting out of order. <clears throat> I know that a lot of the things that are happening and being said, especially that I said it three times, I know I used to work in the prison, so I used to walk in the door and say what I expected my prisoners to do three times when I walked in the door, so when they violated, they instantly was in trouble, we could shut them down. I know that's what I used to do 30 years ago when I worked in the prison, so that's a mentality from the prison. It's like a bestiology mentality. I'm gonna describe that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I want to tell the definition of what bestiology is. There's some other stuff that involves having sex with animals, but the one I want to, I want to repeat is the one that's a disapproving behavior that is very cruel or like that of an animal. That's bestiology. I just want you to know that that's some of the behavior that we're seeing. It behooves me how we can sit up and talk about wanting to put somebody out on the board of ethics 
and accountability for their behavior, yet we want to appoint somebody to the Board of Ethics and Accountability who walks up to four different people's houses, put mail in their mailboxes, threatening people on the Board of Ethics and Accountability. Yes, the, yes, the first appointment came from Mayor Sheldon Neely. The second came where he was escorted into the Board of Ethics and Accountability by Councilwoman in the seventh ward and want to support him in his behavior. That's a, that's, that's a federal offense. And if you support him with that, then you are, are guilty of supporting and supporting somebody with a federal offense. You don't go up and put no mail in anybody's mailbox. That, that's a definitely a federal offense. And you all know it. Y'all should be shaming yourselves. The lies you sit up here and tell. It's just, it's just sad. The lies. And you know you're lying. Can't accept accountability. Council members telling you that you was wrong and that they knew you was wrong and you still couldn't accept it. But that goes to show that mentality that's there. I would like to see some council members when you, when you come back and make comments, let's talk about some of the comments and some of the things that the, that the citizens have made to come or comment on some of that stuff. Like Claire McClendon have been up here talking about the 16 mil that should go to the houses how many times? Stop, stop jumping at and attacking the, cust of the um, residents. We're talking about tangible things that's going to help the citizens of Flint. Tell us when you're going to get ready to walk, lower the water rates. One of y'all just make a resolution and put it on the floor. Let it just get turned down. That's okay. Bring it back again because we need lower water rates. May I speak about the clerk? Madam Chair, if it's okay, if I could just explain the forms again for those individuals. When you filled out the form during the first meeting, I'm going through the numbers from the first meeting. There's a checkbox on here for the two meetings for today. So if you check both, I'm, I'm going through that order. Some of you have filled out three or four forms. You only have to fill out one. And you just check the box for the meetings. I explained this when we first did this. I explained it the last meeting. It's spelled out on this, it's spelled out on the agenda. So I'm explaining it again now, and I'm just trying to make it easy for people to understand. You only have to fill out the form once. You can check the box for which meeting you want to speak in, and I'm gonna start over from the beginning. So some of you have multiple forms, and that, I'm just letting you know. So if you fill out a form for this meeting, I'm still going through the first group. So the next speaker is Doug Matthews. Hello everyone, my name is Doug Matthews and I'm a good government activist from the Seventh Corps. Before I begin, I would like to tell Mr. Jarrett that I'm not impressed with his whataboutism argument. It's what Trump uses and his acolytes use to uh, justify their outrageous behavior. Um, now, today I really want to address, oh I should say one other thing. You mentioned uh, scripture. There is a scripture that says, leaders without vision will see the people perish. And if you don't have a vision for the EAB to be nonpartisan with people of good temperament and reputation, then I don't believe that you will be a contribution here. Um, so let's talk about Tanya Burns. Her actions have become a negative force in our council and community. Burns, who hosts... Uh, excuse me, please pause his time. Audience members, give the same respect to everyone at the lectern. Give the same respect to everyone at the lectern. If not, you will be warned and asked to leave. Pro proceed. Um, Ms. Burns, who hosts the hilarious podcast, Talking with Tanya, or as I like to call it, talking with Tanya, because you have to be high to believe anything she says, has repeatedly disrupted our council functionality and jeopardized our community safety and trust. One alarming incident involving council president Dr. Liddell Lewis. Burns drove an out-of-town activist with a long troubled legal and mental health history to Dr. Lewis's home. 
compromising her safety and justifying her police escort. Such reckless behavior from an elected official is dangerous and irresponsible. Burns' manipulation of the Ethics and Accountability Board over the Ashley Capital matter is another glaring example. She misled the EAB and then targeted certain city council members with unfounded accusations, thereby politicizing a body that should be above politics and further eroding our trust in government. In council meetings, Burns disrupts proceedings, eggs on unruly and sophomoric audience members, and uses device, divisive tactics like spreading misinformation, or as I like to call it, lying, and uh, race baiting. Instead of fostering unity and progress, she hinders critical initiatives for health care, social services, public safety. And Mr. Matthew, please hold. We're going to give you a couple of seconds back. We will not stand for disrespect for anyone at the lectern. Anyone. Anyone. So, colleagues, again, as you look, Mr. Mr. Jared, all the way around to Mr. Elamine, all the way around to Diaz, we need to make sure that we're keeping our chambers in order. It's everyone's responsibility. And if I have to point out in the rules, it is what we're supposed to do. When you refuse to do that, that's a derelict of duty. We are to make sure that everyone has their time at the lectern. So could you please give him 10 more seconds? <laughs> what is your point? Um, you're, according to the rules, he is afforded the same amount of time, not anything extra as everyone else. There's no two or three minutes and 10 seconds. You don't get to give him back time. You are absolutely right. And he's also for the same respect as everyone else. So what we will do, we will give him these 10 seconds and we will proceed. Are you ready? Go ahead, Mr. Matthew. Okay. Ma'am, that's your first warning. That's your first warning. Proceed. What's most troubling is her belief that everybody else is the problem and how she viciously and personally attacks anyone who doesn't agree with her. Her refusal to take responsibility and constant deflection 